Man. In the van. <laughs> the van chats. <laughs> um, you can't see our view, but the view is spectacular. It is. It's unbelievable. It is. Spectacular. And so, in the van. It's a pleasure to be in the van. The van chats. You've heard about the Mac life. <laughs> this is the van life. It's all about the van life. <laughs> so today we're doing a podcast live from the van. I have Lisa Malone on the podcast. Lisa is a podcaster. She has her own Waves podcast. It's w.a.v.e.e.s. <laughs> Just to make um, it difficult. <laughs> it's, I've listened to a good few of them. Um, very good. I'm going to talk about um, one of the topics that Lisa discussed on our podcast. What is spirituality? We're going to uh-huh. speak about that. Um, we're going to speak about life, all sorts of it, a couple of questions and what brought Lisa to this. So check out Lisa on Instagram, Lisa Malone. Check out, uh, sign up to her podcast on Spotify she's on and any other, what Spotify, what else? No, it's just if you go onto on Spotify, Spotify, you'll find it there. That's the main one. Um, and I usually share the links on my Instagram anyway, so you'll find it. Get get all over it. Yeah. So um, we're here at Secret Location. Porto Shelters overlooking <laughs> Land Bay overlooking Ireland's Eye secret location but, so today I'm going to talk Lisa's also a martial artist SPG Nice oh, a martial artist wannabe I suppose <laughs> but oh, doing sure. my best I enjoy it I take part when I can definitely won't, won't you put your feet on the mats that's it yeah definitely oh, yeah man. it's an experience so I'm going to ask Lisa a few questions about growing up where she grew up um, so yeah, so that's actually funny because people always ask me where I'm from and I would say Kildare, so I'm a nice woman. Um, slightly outside my 5k today, John, just a little bit. You have but to piece of paper to say I have to piece of paper. Essential worker. Yeah, I am a central worker. <laughs> um, so, but I grew up in Clondalkin actually. Okay. Um, just for till I was about 10. But D- my parents. D22. Dublin 22, Neilstown, would you believe? Yeah. Yeah, nice, nice spot. Um, I've only fond memories, to be honest. But um, my parents are both from Ballyferma. And uh, at the age of 10, yeah, my dad decided he wanted to get us out, I suppose. So he worked hard, bought a house in Nace. And that was it. We moved to Nace. So I'm a country woman. I'm the culty of the group. Yeah, no, there's nothing wrong with that at all. <laughs> but um, yeah, so like for me, I suppose. Nace is like Nace is basically Dublin now. Do you know it's the commuter town? Um, mm. But I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed growing up there. I had great experiences. Um, it's funny. I I don't think of it as a real country town. If you know what I mean. It's um, it's it's a good old town. I can't complain about it. Yeah. And growing up, did you play sport or what? I actually you? didn't. Do you know okay. what? I I I didn't really play much. I I did a bit of basketball in school but actually my parents had us more so on stage okay yeah so did a lot of drama a lot of musicals singing and dancing and <laughs> so yeah love love the sound of my own voice now and how was school school a good experience for it you? was okay. um do you know what i went to an all-girls school and it was look it's the always the same you'll have the bitchiness and you'll have the girls and they'll always be the ones in fifth year we're gonna stop you there right because Go on. the bitchiness, right? Oh. Keep that in your skull. I have it. Because I, have I was it. listening to you on one of your podcasts and I want to say, yeah, I need to talk to Lisa about that, yeah, that bitchiness. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. you were talking about it and I was like, well, this is what I heard, so I need to talk to okay. Lisa about okay. that. But go back there. So the girls, yeah. so the girls go. That's just, that is unfortunately the norm because it's, it's everything. You're in first year and the third years are the ones that are looking down on the first years. And there's just this like sense of, there is this friction and tension that's what I felt but that's sadly that becomes the norm like you just expect it that's just the rule of thumb that you know you're you're lesser and you're not as cool as the fifth and sixth years so there was always an element of that and there was always you know she went off with his fella or he was texting her it's just growing up but Mm. overall was school okay it was you know um I enjoyed my school years up until about fifth year I kind of went a bit mad a bit off the rails found drink started just trying to rebel I think like everyone does but um, yeah it was just the normal bitchiness good times drinking underage loads of discos that's Sounds. really it yeah it's just I think everyone's childhood really isn't it you see the bitchiness oh, bit, go on get right? into it <laughs> and then this is a, this is what I heard and okay it, it kind of 
the person that I heard talking about this, I value their opinion. And another that de- another guy, I can't pronounce his second name properly. I hope I'm not making an abortion of his name. Is mm. Simon Sinek? Sinek. Sinek. Yeah. Simon Sinek. Yeah. And he was talking about this also. So bitchiness. Why women are so bitchy with each other? Some of them. Mm-hmm. And it's 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 um, it goes back to mother nature the reason being it's a competition for resources so you're in my tribe say we're yeah. out in wherever wandering yeah. around the place you're the beta yeah then there's another alpha there's a couple of other betas and a few other alphas and i'm the alpha mm-hmm. and, and um we have a few beta males as well so when i catch and kill or the male predominantly the hunting is done by males yeah, yeah. this is going back the alpha and the beta the alpha female gets the good cut of meat yeah she's probably going to be pregnant she's probably going to have kids yeah then the beta is like why the fuck is she getting that cut of meat I want that fucking cut of meat and <laughs> this is where it starts so it's it's a mother nature aspect of yeah. I'm fucking fighting my corner I'm holding that fucker down because I want that good cut of me because these two kids I have to feed they need that yeah you know what I mean so it is it's, it's this human way nature. and I was like fucking hell that makes loads of sense yeah, yeah. that kind of makes it's that was my interpretation of it. And, and it is it's competition and it's human nature and I believe that as well to an extent um, and it's jealousy and it's insecurity there's a, there's a whole lot of things I believe that feed into it and it's it's we're all a product of, of our environment, yeah. and um, it's actually it's a lot worse now for kids growing up. I am so fucking grateful that I di- we didn't have social media when I was in mm. school. Thank God we barely mm. had mobile phones, and I'm not that old, but you know, yeah. um, <laughs> mm. I just had to clarify that there. <laughs> but yeah, like it's definitely competition, insecurities, jealousy, but it's definitely something that you just you have it like you develop mm. this this sense of like unease and uncomfortable if somebody you perceive them as a threat mm. it's much like men in a way as well it's mm. not massively different like I believe but what I've come to realise John and this is this is genuine the fucking power when women actually come together mm. and I'd say men will shit themselves yeah because when women work together and they're they're appreciating everything that we have to offer and instead of pulling against each other and tearing each other down it's so much more powerful when you see women supporting each other, putting their heads together, creating together. Um, it's just, it's hard to break that barrier though, I will say. Mm. It is very hard to get to that stage because you have to work on yourself first of all. You yeah. have to look at your own insecurities. Yeah. Why did I feel threatened by her? Like, yeah. why am I feeling jealous? And actually it'll all stem back to you and nobody else. It's all personal. So until you do the work on yourself, until you start to get comfortable with you, and dig deep and figure out why you're insecure or why you feel threatened until that's really addressed you're not going to feel comfortable and you won't feel threatened right now I appreciate so many women when I came down to those shelters and I see women of all different ages shapes, sizes and I spoke about this on a podcast and I remember just looking and going fucking hell there's so many beautiful women now men obviously Mm. as well but the women are just so beautiful they, each of them individually bring something different to the group yeah. And I could appreciate that. Yeah. Could I do that a year or two ago? Probably not. Mm. Do you know? Does that make sense? But but getting back to men and women. <laughs> okay. Getting back to men and women. When a woman, like what you say, like everything all stems from insecurity. Absolutely. All defects of character, all failings, both men and women, stem from insecure like yeah. insecure people are probably the most dangerous person you will ever come across mm-hmm. because you can have a female that's secure in herself has mm-hmm. done the work has knows what kind of can send her off on one and, and males the same they've somehow went on this journey or on a daily basis are looking at their defects of character yeah and trying to address them and trying to sort them out then there's the people that don't do that yeah and in my eyes males or females 
they're fucking red hot. They're dangerous. Red dangerous, hot dangerous, dangerous people. Yeah. Yeah. And red hot in a bad way. Like I've seen, I've seen, I, I spoke about this on my podcast as well, about this um, this this girl and she made an accusation against a friend of mine. Yeah, I anyway, saw you mentioned that was on a van chat, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 she made an accusation and, and, and she, this accusation she made, I remember even at the time going, you know, and uh, to be honest, and open at this at the start, going, Jesus, no smoke without fire, maybe, and yeah, yeah. Now it's that was just personal. I wasn't saying that to anyone. Yeah. It turned out anyway. He spent nearly eighty grand defending himself, and 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 this girl said, um, this this just before it went to court, and uh, this girl said, I made the whole thing up. I was so angry that we split. And I made the whole thing up. So he told me, the police said, we should be charging you now for this. But now, that is one. That happens every now and again. It doesn't happen all the time. But then there's the insecurity. What did that all stem Where from? Where did that come from? Insecurity. That That's stems massive. with horror insecurity. Scumbags out there that attack females. Why do they attack females? Because they're unmanly men. Yeah. They're insecure. They're runts. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you need to do that to somebody to somehow make yourself feel better, you're a fucking runt. Yeah. You know, and I've I've no I've no it doesn't for me it doesn't come down to men or women. I'm team men no, or I'm, te- no, I'm team no, no, no. fucking everyone. But them insecure runts. Yeah. What caused them to be like that, John? That's what I always wonder. Yeah. So I, th- I have a lot of compassion and a lot of empathy. Sometimes yeah. too much empathy, and I'm that's something that I need to work on because you can take on everyone's pain and you can take on everyone's emotions, and it's not good. Yeah. But it's actually your van chat about the whole we are one tribe and men and women, um, and men should be protectors. That mm. I really enjoyed that. Mm. But you know what? That was a funny week for me. Um, I. I actually got very emotional after all that. Mm. I didn't speak about it a lot in, mm. in on my social media, but it was it was hurting me. Yeah. But I didn't really address it and it was at the back of my mind and what happened was I ended up projecting it then I have a group chat with a good few of my friends who are males and we have great time, great chats. A lot of healing goes on in that group yeah. because there's a lot of things that we can discuss openly and they'll call you on something. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. if they think Lisa's been a little bit insecure or something or she's still hurting they'll they'll call you on it we yeah. discuss it and it's healed yeah but i i got into a debate with them i got really really fucking hot and bothered about this topic about the whole not all men mm. and i absolutely I laid didn't. into them what's not all men I didn't there was like this so after that um that girl sarah ever was was raped and murdered or whatever yeah. there was hashtags going around and there was a lot of posts on social media and it was not all um, was it not all men I think something like that anyway basically yeah men started coming out going it's not all men and it was like a real defence mechanism mm-hmm. like you can't tar us all with the same brush Yeah. and absolutely I fully agree yeah, with yeah. that yeah. but with some people were getting triggered going you don't need to say not all men because actually you're just taken away from, from the whole concept of it we're not saying that it's all men yeah. so okay look whatever but I actually really took that on board and I started lashing out and laying into the lads yeah. and I was just spewing venom yeah. I was spewing venom and I went off on a big tangent and I absolutely annihilated them and I was just do you know what it was it was all my hurt and my pain from experiences that I've had and I just literally spilled it out onto them because I wasn't dealing with it and I just it erupted shit went down and they were all like whoa do you know what that is Go on. This was explained to me. Resentment, when yeah. you break it down, the meaning in Latin is to relive a past hurt. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> and I know that. And do you know what happened was I left the group chat, I went off, and I was like yeah. fuming. There was steam coming from my ears. But then I was crying. So I was I was actually very, very upset. But I couldn't pinpoint it. And for the, the next 24 hours, I was just very emotional. And I have a good level of self-awareness now. So I've done a lot of work on myself and I had to step back and go, well, what the fuck are you really feeling here, Lisa? These men are actually really, really strong influences in your life. They have helped me so much in the Mm. last few months in making me believe that there are really solid men, manly men in the sense that Mm. they will protect, they will care, they are kind and caring. 
and they've brought that all on to, to me and made me realize that so why was i projecting all that shit mm. and i had to take a step back that day and just go whoa what the f- what's actually going on with me mm. and it was me it was my resentment and my hurt and my pain that i hadn't dealt with mm. so i had to go with my tail between my legs and apologize and then i had to actually dig deep into myself and go mm. where did that come from why are you feeling that because it wasn't fair on them Mm. for me to go well actually they did nothing they did nothing wrong um so it's just funny because my own insecurities were projected onto them and they got the backlash and it is mm. dangerous it's not nice and i think i think we we do this i i always like spoken like speaking conversation yeah and even like my van chats are a conversation they're not me like in my echo chamber i'm wrong I am wrong all the time (laughs) I keep an open mind I say stuff to start conversation but I can be wrong and I put my hands up and go I was wrong on that or or whatever I think with social media and with this rabid group we have out there hunting social media for racism oh that comment could be deemed racism let's cancel this fucker or that type of stuff I think social media as a medium to converse is grand doing this type of stuff Mm -hmm. but when you're typing out stuff it's like getting a whatsapp when you're not writing yourself and you wake up or something and and somebody bangs your whatsapp and you're like what the fuck does that mean instead of how are you you going whacker do you want to meet me at me at the shelters going oh i can't make that oh you cunt what it's, it's, it's just too easy to misconstrue the mm. whole concept of it and I yeah conversation is key I will like you John I'll, I'm I'm always fucking wrong I, there's a lot of times I can be wrong yeah. but I'm not afraid to step back and go well hang on a second where did that come from because I need to address something in myself and that's why conversation is so fucking powerful because you're having those conversations and you get to learn from it so you doing your van chats and you're putting it out there and I can see it. sometimes it's just your thoughts it's off the bat like you're not mm. you're not planning it no, no, you're just no. going oh do you know what I'll sit here with my cup of tea yeah. and I'll have a little chat and if you I say, read something or whatever it is something has triggered you for, yeah. yeah exactly so you'll do that and you'll put it out there but that's at that very moment and then some I might come along and go John actually do you know what I watched that and this is mm. my thoughts on it and this is what I've learned and we'll have a conversation around it and you might learn something new yeah. and you'll have no problem in coming back and going fuck Lisa do you know what you were right I was wrong and yeah. I'm the very same so for me my insecurities I address them and I acknowledge them and I'll do the work then and try and uncover what that really came from so hurt people hurt people and I know that sounds very cliche but yeah. I've learned that massively mm. when you're hurting and you have pain man or woman yeah. you can bury it for so long but it'll come out and it comes out it's, it's nasty I see f- people in my life like mm around I'm not going to say family members or friends people in my life Mm -hmm. and I see both men and women some of them married some of them in relationships and I look at them and and the way me and Yvonne operate it's it's the way it's it's like yeah we are together but we're we're a strong unit and we're completely independent I support her and no matter what she does and, and push her and vice versa yeah. you know what I mean yeah. and it's it's a good I look at other people's relationships and, and it's easy to look and criticise mm-hmm. but I'm like that's not a fucking relationship that's a hostage situation <laughs> yes. do you know what I mean and I'd always be like if you're if, if me and you are in a relationship and I'm giving you shit about being here at 10 o'clock and stuff like that it's like what the fuck age are you Yeah. what yeah. the fuck age are you I look at this stuff and go and if anyone has listened to this, if you're with a partner or anyone that is like, where are you at 10? Either male or female, you're in a fucking hostage situation. <laughs> That's not a relationship. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I see a lot of people like that and go, fuck that. It's control, John. Uh, yeah. Everything is controlled. And it can be very, very subtle. Yeah. But when you start to recognise it, and if we all do it we're definitely all guilty of it at some stage in our life I mm. believe and where you want to have a little bit of control um, and the biggest lesson that I learned I suppose one of them is is, is that you, we control nothing and no one Yeah. you can control how you react to a situation you're responsible for how you do, deal with things but that's where it ends mm. that's where it ends everybody else is a free spirit a free individual 
So, and everything they do is for themselves. It's nothing to do with you. So don't take things personally. But control, it's just, it's a tricky one. It's, it's, mm. I see it a lot as well. And I, I see you and Yvonne and I know just from, from following it and I get, I, I, it's, it's very admirable. Um, but too often, more, more times than not, I see relationships that are like that. Mm. It's just like, oh God, I better be here because I know I told him I'd be there at 10. And that sense of like, you're anxious about going to be mm. somewhere with someone that's supposed to love you and care for you. Yeah. But I think that's all, it comes back to control. Somebody wants to feel that they have the power. There's a power struggle there. Yeah. It's not nice though. No, no. I, but on the other side, I will say some people, some people will need to be controlled because they can't think for themselves. So mm. they're quite happy to give over their power and be controlled. Yeah. That makes sense. No, 100%. <laughs> I'm just waffling now, but I'm like, I think that's yeah. It's 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 that's how I feel anyway. Hundred percent. And and males and females, it's 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 a kind of a lot of people can get upset, like you and Sarah Everard. That mm. was fucking horrendous. Uh. But if you're like all men are 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 all men are are cons. You're <laughs> you're the type of person that is like, um, all black people sell drugs, all. Northsiders sell drugs and yeah. commit crime. All, unfortunately, it's easy to kind of paint everyone. Yeah. But and 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 the majority of attacks on women are by men. Yeah. You know. Yeah. The majority. Yeah. But there actually is some good men out there. Oh, there is. But do your homework. You know, like I I explained the story about my son on the dart, like going on the darts at half ten at night coming home from town mightn't be the best idea no. Max you no. know what I mean no so it's, you're not it's you're men yourself. it's teenagers and women there's absolutely wankers out there it doesn't wankers. matter that's it it's, it's people wankers out there yeah it's it's people and that was a big thing for me to realise as well that it's not it's it's not to have that hatred towards men and not be spiteful towards them yeah. um, it's, it's men and women some women are absolutely vicious as well you know but it's it's all I always come back to why why are they like that and I saw a case there I, I commented on it yonks ago I'm not going to name names but about this girl and she was in her car and she kind of put how would you say she painted a picture of a scenario that kind of happened and only for the CCTV came out the scenario she painted kind of she pa- stuck a bit of bells and whistles on it right now she was lauded got so many f- thousands of extra followers and blah 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 and then when the CCTV came out you're kind of going oh mm. and, and 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 the thing about it is if 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 somebody comes onto my social media and and starts accusing me of all types of stuff or whatever mm-hmm. I'm old school men or women the next time You're I getting... see it I'm going to fucking say it to you I'm not going to hit you with a fucking hashtag yeah. I'm going to say in a non-violent no. aggressive way go the fuck you at man yeah. you know what I mean that's just how I roll you know what I mean? I'm, I'm not, not gonna... one of these pleading I, do you know how I, I this is a fucking great story the other day. This summed up social media. Mm. I left the beach yesterday, right? I was going to meet Maz and I was coming through down in my head, right? Mm. And this girl had obviously pulled into the yellow box and the traffic on front of her didn't move. Yeah. Now, I only seen her. I didn't really see. And then, next of all, our fella kind of shoveled up. There was a, a kind of a Mercedes on front of me, right? And your man on talking puts his hand on the no. horn, right? Oh. For about a minute. Next of all, your woman's fella gets out of the car oh, and stop. goes over to the Mercedes. The fella in the Mercedes was like this, right? You could see him like this, and then you could just see him like that. Get it's like his bollocks shriveled up. He was just like fucking that. And it's like, that is social media. Right fucking there. Yes. We're going to fucking comment. Two two. We're going to hit you with a hashtag. And next of all, when it comes to it, Oh Jesus, I think I've just shit myself.
Yeah. <laughs> oh, we've all been there. So say so, John. You've done that. Just you bollocks, blowing so the horn off, or just giving someone the fingers, and then you pull up somewhere and they're behind you in the shop, or they're, you oh, work with them or something. And you're like, oh god, yeah, let man, it go. fucking, you could see it's fucking bollocks shriveling <laughs> yeah. up. He nearly shot himself in the car in front of me. And Deadly. you're there pissed, pissed off, laughing. Yeah. I was fucking delighted. Oh, stop, That's yeah. social media. That is social media. It can be a great tool, or it can be an absolute weapon. Mm, no, that's a, and and then that control we spoke about. Yeah. <clears throat> the only control I have is over myself. I've no control over people, places, or things. No. Live independent and just control my own behaviors. Look after myself. Try and ask God uh, for a bit of help every yeah. day, and and just keep on rocking through it. You know. That's it. That's it. And you know what? It's um a big thing for me is to you can choose to live in pain and be emotionally distraught and and wallow in and play the victim Mm. now I know this because I've fucking done it Mm. for long enough I've played the victim because it's actually you get some kind of sick gratification from living in your pain Mm. because you have it I'm a victim I'm some someone cheated on me or someone hurt me or someone attacked me Mm. and I'm not taking away from it but when you realize that you're actually giving away your own power by mm. playing the victim, do you get me? Mm. So, put, and you're putting the blame elsewhere. I I had a moment where I was getting so angry over someone. How could they do that to me? Mm. How could they hurt me? Yeah. I'm so furious. Fucking me, 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 me. Yeah. How could they? And I stopped and I went, you know, hang on a second here now. You are responsible for how you feel, Lisa. You choose how you feel. You wake up, you can choose to be absolutely miserable. You can choose to feel low. You can choose to feel angry, jealous, whatever. And it's literally just change your thought. Mm-hmm. Now, today I'm actually going to be fucking happy. Today I'm going to feel good about myself. I'm going to look for the positive. And you take back that control. That's really powerful. It mm-hmm. might sound really simple or people might be thinking she's off the wall. But I'm telling you, if you sit and go, God, I'm so fucking miserable today and I'm filled with rage. Yeah. If you sit in that, John, long enough... Mm-hmm. you'll actually become it you'll feel it you'll embody it you'll you'll sit in that for as long as as you want until until what until you're sick and you're, you're it just spirals so take back the power and realize that you control how you feel nobody else yeah. someone else is on their own journey they're doing things for their own reasons mm-hmm. you've decided to go off and be with somebody else because that makes you happy it's mm-hmm. nothing to do with me mm-hmm. you know and it's you, you see the way pain like Carl Jung talks about that mm-hmm. pain is the touchstone to spiritual progression oh yeah right pain traumatic pain whatever it is and if anybody is listening to this in deep emotional traumatic pain yeah somebody's gone off with someone else on you you've lost your job you've lost this I know people that have been sexually abused males that have been sexually abused I know girls that have been raped I know lads that have been shot at shot I know girls that I know a girl that's been shot. Somebody tried to murder. Blah blah blah. These people now are some of the strongest individuals who I take deep inspiration from. Yeah. Because of that fucking pain that they didn't ask for, but they are not victims. They're yeah. not going around like victimhood. Yeah, they've acknowledged what's happened to them. And they've put a program in place and developed a manner of living yeah. to improve from that. Yeah. And and these people, like I, I communicate with them across social media and I follow their stuff and I'm just like, they give me so much help because the growth... The growth is massive, isn't it? And it's never finished. They're, we never get there. You think we you get to get a stage, there. John. This is, this never is a, get there. And that was what I said. Like, I, I've... I've been through my own little mini trauma. Trauma can be anything. It can be it can be a very physical trauma. It can be lots of different things. A breakup. It can be your parents separating. It can be it can be abuse. It can be domestic Mm. violence. There's lots of different things, and you can grow from that. It's not fucking easy. It's not easy. But when you realize that, yeah, take steps to actually heal yourself from that. You do, you see those people, there's a resilience there, but you're not burying those emotions. You're not mm. just going, oh, that happened, I'll park that and mm. I'll move on because I'm fucking great. That's actually the complete opposite. You have to do the work, you have to acknowledge it because when you bury and suppress emotions, 
it will come out in some form and mm. it's usually sickness um mm. i've read a good book is it by gabber mate uh when the body says no yes and, oh it's so yeah, fucking yeah, it's interesting but like for me i throughout my life um working in busy environments working in the bank being stressed being busy thinking that was what i had to do mm. that was the goal was to be as busy as i possibly could and i was just getting stressed and more stressed and more anxious and I wasn't addressing it and I ended up really really sick all the time I woke up one morning half my face was paralysed I had yeah. Bell's palsy I had massive gut issues I was severely anemic I just loads of little things mm. but all because I, I was I wasn't dealing with anything in my life really Yeah. I was just suppressing it all so if you don't do the work and you suppress it it comes out in some shape or form yeah you know and I, I love Gabor Dr. Gabor Mate anything by him yeah. Um, anything we we read a, a lot of his stuff to do with ADD and ADHD okay. and, and kids and stuff. He's very he's yeah. very clued in, but his his um his his ideals on addiction and our behaviours around addiction are fuck yeah some, something else. But you speak about like that pain mm. and people in that emotional pain, like. The experience I had with emotional pain, I'm not, not going to go into it. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I remember when it happened to me when I was younger, I remember being absolutely paralyzed for a couple of years over it and self-medicating. And then when it causes you enough pain, you go, fuck this. Oh. Whereas I am thankful now yeah. that that all happened. I, If you were to say to me now, well, if we could click a switch and that wouldn't happen I'd like no leave it alone yeah. that was perfect I needed that and there's people out there that horrendous stuff is happening to them you can choose to self medicate and stay a victim yeah. or you can choose to actually develop a life for a living consult other people consult professionals and grow from the experience Absolutely. because the li- our life is so full of our world is so full of well if you were me you wouldn't be so many victims out there I'm not taking away from no, what no. has ever, ever's happened to them but the world doesn't need any more victims it needs more leaders it needs, needs more real men it needs more real women yeah. we don't need more victims we fucking are well stocked up with them we you are know? and actually it's the ones that it's, it's the ones that have come through that pain yeah. that you'll always go do you ever just meet someone and go god he or she has so much insight there's something about them that you just feel drawn to them and you everything that they share their insights you can't get enough of it mm. it's like you just want to hook it to your veins yeah. and when you get to know it's like well actually they haven't had the most pleasant of lives and they've mm. had various different experiences but they've chosen to do the work on themselves and they've chosen to take the lessons from everything and um, and it's admirable it's not easy yeah it's not easy but it's it is easier to sit in the victim mentality mm. but you're doing yourself no favors you really are like you can change it like a flip of, i literally change your your thought process and do you ever find yourself before in the past over a situation where you just ruminate on it all the time so you think one thought god i remember he did that and next thing you're down like a whole rabbit hole of every single horrible thing that that person has done to you and you feel it you're living in that moment again you're just you feel crap mm. what what does that serve you what does that do mm. absolutely nothing yeah. nothing only put you into shit form yeah no. that's it that's it so there you go we got very deep there didn't we <laughs> no it's and, and and then with regard to there's lots of people out there and they're kind of at that beginning stage like mm. they're they're searching they know there's something wrong with them but they're searching and the only thing you're guaranteed in life is Lisa me or people we let you down Yeah. we will let you down I'm of clay feet I'll let you down nobody is bulletproof no. people gurus there's no such thing people will let you down but it's that constant striving that again don't put all your belief in people yeah. Look at yourself. Look at Mother Nature, God, mm-hmm. whatever. A power of your own understanding. Whatever you know what I mean? Is. Yeah. And 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 try and 
hang on and latch on to that and improve. Mm -hmm. And people letting you down is not a bad thing. No. It's actually a good thing because they're showing you they're human. Yeah. And that's that's yeah. That's my take on it. I anyway, agree with you. you know? I agree with you definitely. Yeah. And you just become a little bit more secure in yourself as well because you're the constant in your life. And and you've put the reason why a lot of victims are, are like have this mentality is because instead of taking responsibility themselves, it's like oh. Lisa's gonna make me well and then when Lisa doesn't make me well it's like oh fucking Lisa fucking another one after let me down you know and unfortunately you yeah. know it's about growth the more it's about a numbers game I like Jiu Jitsu and the way I play Jiu Jitsu is the way I play my life I am not gonna attack an arm bar if I'm on your back I'm gonna try and strangle you because the percentages of me strangling you are 80%. The chances of me arm barring you are dropping to about 50. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I always aim for the higher percentage submissions. You know? Makes sense. You know, it's yeah. the same with wrestling. You aim for the higher percentage takedowns mm -hmm. rather than the flashy, shitty ones. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So when you surround yourself with positive people that are doing the right thing, they're not self-medicating with loads of drugs. Yeah. They're present. They're reading. They're trying to better themselves. Yeah. They're trying to push businesses and they're going in the right direction. They're the people you need to be around. They are the people you need to be around. And you know? they're the people that will bring out that growth in you. Because you won't last very long around them if you're not willing to do the work and take the lessons from them. Do you know? Yeah. You'll quickly you'll quickly find that you won't fit into that group um, until you actually start to to take the lessons from them and to be inspired by them yeah no that's uh, that's that was kind of and that was a long winded point about <laughs> that kind of that, that other end you know yeah. and, and the break up part it, I suppose this is another bit I'm going to discuss as well a, a person in my life um, lover and and the life that she's lived um, she was with a previous partner and um she had a couple of kids mm -hmm. and she was being physically abused by the person in her mm -hmm. life and I remember her recalling like where she was in her life going like back in the day this is what you put up with this is what happens you know what I mean yeah and there was nowhere for her to go um, and to look at her where she is in her life now that now like I I don't have to accept that yeah. I don't have to you know, like put up with this and fucked up in her head that like the physical abuse was somehow some type of love yeah you know yeah and then even worse I, I, I've heard this from someone else as well another female with that mental torture sometimes you prefer a dig to that fucking just breaking you yeah. down that mental torture both males and females oh, do yeah. this you know what I mean M may, not the physicality from females but the verbal assault you know what I mean I've seen it myself I've, 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 I've witnessed it where I've seen women that I know literally verbally abuse and it's like a constant flow of mm. just venom just thrown at their partner and I it's really hard to watch and witness mm. um, and it's uncomfortable because you just see that and it's 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 not nice it's not it's not pleasant to watch but you really that person is what are they, why are they attacking that person that they're supposed to love why are they verbally mentally trying to break down that person that they love mm. you know it's strange but yeah like when you're in a relationship John that that is abusive in any way sometimes it's it's a lot of things it's first of all it's it's very uncomfortable to think about not being in that relationship mm -hmm. it's a lot of fear and it's it's like the myself, not knowing the not knowing I'll be on yeah. my own blah blah oh, blah clear. I was what will I, was, I do all my what, friends what's I outside married. of this like yeah. I, I was I was very young I have a 16 year old son so I had him when I was 19 and was it the making of me probably yeah definitely Barry Keoghan Huh? Barry Keoghan oh. that's what I call your young <laughs> yeah, image yes. of being Barry. oh that's gas check, I was like check her young out I was like how do you know Barry Keoghan she's like that's me son I was like he's fucking Barry Keoghan's fucking <laughs> stunt double <laughs> John I no, no, I was Ian and Kings so I, I was like, like Barry Keoghan's stunt double 
Oh, you're blessed. He is from the story profile. And only when you said to me, I was like, oh my God. I wet myself laughing at like, <laughs> I was like, this lad's fucking in the group tower. I sent the lads a screenshot. I was like, John's fucked. Like, what's he on about? I was like, is he on something? And they were like, what? And then I, you yeah, came back to me going, he's, oh, it was just so funny. But anyway, my son Dylan. Yeah. I had him when I was 19. So, like, to a lot of people, that's very young, and it is. And uh, But I was in a relationship then with, obviously, his father, and then we bought a house when I was 20, 21. Right. Because that's what you do. You tick the boxes, John. Yeah, you get a house. Yeah, yeah we, we, we got engaged and everything as well. And it's like as if some people can see things that you can't see because you're right in it. But I remember my mother was just like, don't fucking move into this house. Don't do this. And she always had this, like, worry and fear about me. And... It's very hard for me to talk about this. Sorry, he no, he was very. It, there was physical okay. violence involved in that, and um, there was one particular time it was extremely bad. Um, I had injuries and stuff, and mm. it was extremely traumatic. But and Dylan was only young, and he was there as well when it happened. Mm. And I just remember, like, I stayed with him after that, mm. and I stayed with him for a long time after that because. Because I still to this day I wonder why, because like the things he did and 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 the the the, the level of physical violence that I endured, on even just one particular occasion was horrific. Like, mm. um, I remember being in the doctor's surgery, waiting to go in to see the doctor, and a man beside me said, "Oh, it must have been a bad accident, was it, love? Are you okay? You thought I was in a car accident?" Mm. And I was like, "Oh yeah, grand." Mm. But why didn't I leave him? I was so af- I was so afraid. I was a mother. I had a house. What would everyone think? Yeah. What would everybody else That's, think? That, that was would, it. Yeah. And and there's probably single girls listening to this mm. really and walk a mile in my shoes and come back to me. It's like just going, Oh my god, you should have it's I get that. I do get that. Yeah. And, and I remember my dad telling a similar story. It's like what well, like what would the neighbours think yeah. what would people think and it is that it's you know? like my like I grew up where well, my parents you know you stay together because you have the kids Jesus Christ you stay together mm. and have the kids like when was divorce okay in Ireland when, I don't even know it's not that long that mm. you could actually legally divorce somebody but so I suppose I had an element of that in me going I have to stay in this relationship because we've had a child together and I'm a young single mother and it's not easy and we've just bought a house together and where do I go how do I start my life again mm. with without this like I'm and to think about it I'm, I was such a young woman with mm. that fear of what the fuck will everyone say and eventually I did mm. and it was a bold move but it's funny because then I did have people wondering what oh god and you had this and you had the house and what's happening with that and it's like even when I, was, I found out I was pregnant I was I was extremely young I know my parents were disappointed mm. So they didn't talk to me for a good few months okay there was no conversation there yeah I felt that and even people I went to school with you know just that real oh Jesus your one's pregnant that was fucking horrible mm. I wasn't able to enjoy the gift of being a mother or being pregnant because I was so worried about everyone else and the shame and the guilt attached to a kind of I sort of had to hide mm. it wasn't pleasant but it's funny because what year was that oh th- I had him in 2004 okay Okay, so yeah. we're coming out of that. Mm. Mm. Oh, I think definitely now. Like, I mean, it's an absolute gift. And from the minute that he was born and he came into our lives, my everyone in my family just everyone just loved him to bits. Mm. And it was like it just changed because he was here. Mm. But it's everyone else's worries and concerns. Like my parents are thinking, oh, her life is over now. Yeah. What's she gonna do? And that's. But that was their... That's their bringing up. That's their thought process. You, you spoke about a couple of things, like the physical violence and stuff yeah. like that in the relationship. If there's any girls listening to this that are going through that at the oh. moment, there's so many fucking supports there to ring now. Massive. Run. Fucking go, run. Go. Just go. Run. Anyone, Sisters, brothers. Doesn't give a fuck mm. what anyone thinks. Just run. Yeah. That's that one. Massive. Fucking Massive. And you know what, John, it is. It's, it's, it's if you think that if you start to justify it in your head oh well he was or she no. if yeah. it depends he was drunk 
or he he's really tired he's really stressed never make an excuse there is no excuse that person has their own shit they need to deal with and they're not going to fix it overnight and no one should ever 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 make you feel inferior or vulnerable or threatened or scared in your own safe environment ever it is a disgusting thing to do but that person has their own issues so never if once once it's one time too many if someone lays a hand on you go the truth always comes out with drunk people yeah. children yeah. and yoga pants <laughs> <laughs> and yoga pants so drunk people yeah. there's no excuse no matter if somebody's putting hands on you drunk or not drunk yeah. you know they mean to put fucking hands on you so just run go run down fucking there's so many services out there now for oh, for nice. um for for women yeah you know yeah so and many. i'm i'm really open to like because it's not something i've ever really talked about and you know what it's because i was ashamed of it mm. i was massively ashamed of it and i also wanted to protect him a little bit as well which is a bit weird isn't it mm. it's a bit fucked up but mm. i remember i i was ashamed to tell people and i was trying to hide it from i remember a couple of times i had a few bruises on my face and my mother was sitting there having coffee with me and she you know your mom knows mm. fucking everything mm. mothers have that gut instinct mm. um, and I remember sitting in Nace with her having a coffee and I had I had bruising on my cheek and I remember trying to hide up the makeup but she could fucking see it and she was just sitting there and she was like what's on your face mm. and I can't imagine what she was feeling and the worry that she was feeling but the fact that I was trying to hide it was just it, it, you know there's, there's no need to talk to people talk to me if you need to I'm such an open book and I'm I want to take everyone in my arms and just help them and bring them along because I've been there yeah. But just to know there is massive support out there. Reach out to somebody if it's me or anyone at all mm. in your life. Just yeah, just to address that. And and for any man out yeah. there, if you come in locked drunk or whatever, or you're not drunk or whatever, and you physically abuse your wife, partner, whoever, you and appealing to the men out there as well. And this isn't a man virtue signally shot for me. This is just me being honest. Mm. I say this to your face anyway, or social media. It's like you need to go and get a bit of help. Cause that's not fucking normal yeah. you know and like I hate bullying under any guys yeah. with regard to women to men or men to women I fucking abhor and can't stand fucking bullies yeah. Yeah. and if you feel like you need to bully someone or put them down you, you need to get all right with yourself yeah. you need to fucking sort yourself out Absolutely. because if, if to put hands on someone to make yourself feel somewhat you need to fucking have a long hard chat mm. with yourself and, and do some work on yourself because it's not fucking yeah. cool you know do you know what cool. though the one thing I will say is that for me I it made me like and I know it, this the, the silver line it made me really strong yeah and I mean is in not 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 it had it's ups and downs so I was much stronger and I got to get on with my life and I went okay I'm going to get a job I'm going to work my arse off I'm going to always provide for me and Dylan and I'm just going to be really really tough mm. But then also I buried a lot of shit. But that brought me then, I never want to feel weak or vulnerable. I never mm. want to feel like I'm inferior. I want to be strong. I want to be able to protect myself. So I would then start to look into like being active and fit and strong and lifting in the gym and then finding boxing eventually. Mm. So, you know, it, it like you say, with your own experience and your own emotional hurt um, growing up, if you could change that, would I? No, mm. and that's 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 probably very hard for people to grasp, and I understand that. But there's lessons to be taken from it, and it it shapes you into who you are today, mm. and it brings you on the path in to to different things, and and that's that's what the way I look at it, you know. Mm. And what is spirituality? Pain is the touchstone to spiritual growth. What does that mean? It's like I am able for massive massive amounts always grown up massive amounts of physical pain some of the stuff i used to do sporting wise or whatever mm. i i could put myself through torturous stuff what i'm a fucking absolute wimp and pussy around is emotional pain, emotional pain. it fucking cripples me it mm -hmm. oh, bollocks it, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what it what it does is turn this fucking around here. It cripple oh, bollocks. There we go. Yeah, you hold that there. Turn that there. What it does is 
definitely wrap it up after this anyway. Mm -hmm. It cripples me. Um and it me it 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 makes you go, I'm not living in this space. I need to fix do something yeah. like with your it it mine happen in a week. No. Mine happen in a month. Mine happen in six months. If you let that go, will it still drop? Here we're we go. Good. We're all good. We're all good. No sudden movements, John. No sudden movements. <laughs> but you, you have to take action. Yeah. And that action is, okay, I need to go to a psychotherapist. I need to go to a spiritual advisor. I need to go with someone experience in this. I need to read books. I need to, because the way I'm feeling here, it's not good. No. I'm, I'm not... I'm not, and and then the way I'm feeling, I'm going out putting this feeling onto other people. Because when you're hurt, when you're resentful, when you're wounded, it's like trying to drink a liter of bleach, hoping the fucker that you're resentful against dies. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's 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 not going to work. Like, no, definitely you know? not. No, and that's it. And you know what? It's, um talking about spirituality and people say spiritual awakening and they that that term i think people get real like oh spiritual awakening jesus christ but put it this way right how much of our lives and our days do we spend living on autopilot yeah do you ever get into the car and just drive to work and you don't you go how the fuck did i yeah. get here because you've done it automatically and yeah. it's become habitual like everything else like getting up in the morning you check your phone you put your left foot into your slipper before your right or whatever yeah. these are all little things on a small scale but overall you're, you can be living your whole life on autopilot and you're not experiencing or appreciating anything around you nothing is ever going to fucking change because you're not changing anything Yeah. so for me a spiritual awakening is to stop all that mm. is to stop all that and to live in the moment as it is and to live a little bit in the unknown and and for me in the last year or so that's been massive that awakening for me because I stopped all that cycle I broke away from everything that I was previously as in the 9 to 5 always really busy this 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 ticking boxes getting this lifestyle that everyone else kind of thinks is the perfect lifestyle Yeah. and actually just stopping and going okay what do I do now I, I'm working on myself I'm free I might go to the beach I might go for a walk I might sit in nature I've had some of the most profound experiences, John, just fucking sitting looking at the sea. Because <laughs> yeah. you're so present in that moment. Do you mm. ever have that where you watch, you look at the sunset or the sunrise and it still takes your breath away and you still just go, I'm so fucking grateful that I'm here. Yeah. Because you're so present in that moment. It's mm. just like, it's really hard to explain, but you can be, you, it might not seem to everyone else, they're like, why, why are they so in awe of that? Why would you get up yeah. and go for a swim? Because you're living on autopilot and you're not breaking that cycle and you're just comfortable in what you're doing. Mm. So that's kind of a very loose way of saying it is to awaken from your little bubble that you're in and your, that little flow of, of just doing everything on autopilot and start to just live a little bit in the unknown. I, I recently read a, a book. It's um, an autobiography and the guy talks about this in his book. He was treated with depression and he talks about before he went into hospital he did this walk and his head was just fucking up his arse he was mm. adult and then after his 11 week stint or whatever it was he did the same walk and he did the walk with the same person that he did the walk on and he was like, he did the, <laughs> the same walk with the person that he was walking with the previous whatever 12 weeks I'll get some sellotape on that. But he did the walk with the same person. Constant professionals here were still fucking talking away. <laughs> but um, he did the same walk with the same person. But he was um, he was like uh, going, oh my god, look at that fucking sea and look at the mountains and blah blah blah. You know what I mean? Oh, that is a spiritual connection a spiritual experience mm -hmm. it's still in the oven is it Just look. yeah what I can't oh me self self level panics can you just hold it yeah just hold it but he did the same walk anyway and um, I think when you go through enough pain and you do the work that you start to notice all this stuff yeah I don't I never 
and I used to cycle with headphones in all the time and I used to run early on with headphones and then I got rid of them because it's like I want to kind of experience this stuff and I don't want to be just getting through it and just like, drowning out the yeah. sound of everything around you and yeah. yeah yeah numbing yourself nearly to an extent and that's a survival thing Viktor Frankl talks about that in his book as well he goes the people that survived that could see the beauty in the midst of all the horror and he was speaking about Auschwitz yeah. he was talking about even how bad it was that out of every 28 Jews that went in there only one would survive you'd still see nice sunset through the barbed wire yeah. you had to focus on that stuff because if you don't focus on that stuff you lose your meaning for life that's what's important like all the other shit I'm not materialistic or anything like that is not important no. it's not important like we came into this life with nothing we leave with nothing and what you do in the midst of enjoying all this shit and, and helping other people that's what it's all about and I don't mean like cash register helping going oh look I just gave your man a hundred euros I'm a fucking kill cunt I mean actually going out of your way to message someone to ask them how they are to physically give them a dig out not financially but emotionally spiritually or physically yeah. you know what I mean yeah it's that's so for much me more. that's for me is what spirituality is about it's not trying to explain to you the difference between fucking Allah or God or no. you know what I mean it's no. not about that at all or whose God is better they're all fucking cool whichever <laughs> one you fucking yeah. like you know what yeah, I mean yeah absolutely you know for me that's that's what that is you know but I think we're gonna have to fucking <laughs> this is hanging on by a thread here <laughs> literally I'm holding it <laughs> Lisa's a uh, fucking interviewee camera camera woman here as well so um, check out Lisa's podcast w dot a dot e dot e dot s Spotify. Check her out on Instagram. She's doing a women's circle, a women's, women's circle. circle. Yeah, where it's going to be just mindfulness practices, a lot of holistic stuff, um, discussion forums, so much more. I'll share some information about it. But um, I've two spaces left, and I'm starting Monday week, um, and it's just going to be a safe space for women to empower other women. I just want to give back to all the moths. You up back the moths. To the moths. <laughs> and and the thing with with like workshops or anything like that, I'd never done a workshop or anything like that that I walked away from and, and went. That's a lot of bollocks. Yeah. I've done crazy ones, and Yvonne would say to me, "What are you fucking doing yeah. that for?" It's like because I can. Because you, you can, know? and you're giving back to yourself, yeah. and that's exactly it. Like it's it's uh, this is done over three weeks as well, so there's nine classes in total, and uh, it's just because we talked about it at the start. It's about empowering other women. It's it's a break breaking that cycle and coming together. And that's really it, in a nutshell. Whopper. It's been a pleasure being in the van. <laughs> I'm red van man. I'm not white van man. So please, could you share this podcast? Send it to somebody you think would get something from it. Um, check out our Spotify, our YouTube. Just help, give us a dig out because I want to grow this. So if you can spread it on WhatsApp, whatever your social media. Leave us a comment underneath this. Let us know what you thought of it and um, give Lisa a follow. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yep. Yes. Do you know how to download all that and turn that off and do what he was saying? <laughs> I'm a fucking clue. Okay. Oh, no, I don't. Okay. This will be fun anyway. <laughs> Did he show you how to do it? Uh, no. Oh, fuck. I better see it, but what that shit. Well, press that. What's that? No. Oh, bollocks. Go back. End video. Okay. End <laughs>